Apple has officially released its latest operating system, iOS 12, and while it's currently in beta, we're going to showcase some key features and changes to the new OS. So one thing you'll notice that's a little bit different in iOS 12 is the notifications on your lock screen. Normally when you receive a ton of notifications, you have to scroll and scroll all the way through to see all of your text messages and your tweets and your email alerts. Now it's grouped together by category. So all of your Instagram notifications are together in one group. All of your tweets are together in one group. And that way you can easily search through them without having to scroll through this long list of crazy notifications. So if you want to see all of your tweets, for instance, all you would do is tap on the group of tweets and you can either scroll through all of them and clear or view specific ones or you can just clear them all by tapping on the X. What you can also do is manage specific ones. So this is a really cool feature that will also allow for less notifications if you feel like you're getting a ton from one specific app that you don't really care as much about. If you swipe on a group, you'll see the manage button. And this will allow you to do one of two things. You can either turn them off completely so that you don't receive the notification at all, or you can choose to deliver quietly. This means that it'll bypass the lock screen. You'll still receive the notification, but just won't show up. In iOS 11, the only things that you could really do with the Do Not Disturb feature is toggle it on when you don't want to receive notifications and toggle it back on when you do. But in iOS 12, you're now able to do a little bit more. So there's a new bedtime mode feature that you can toggle on and off. And you can also set the times from which you go to bed and you wake up. So we set ours to 10 p.m. and wake up at 7 a.m. And then when you toggle it on, you won't receive any notifications on your lock screen between those hours. And it will also dim the lock screen for you as well. That way, when you wake up in the middle of the night, you're not scrolling through tons of notifications on this extremely brightly lit screen. The quiet hours can also apply to any moment throughout the day that you know you don't want to receive notifications. You can just set different times instead, and that way, when you toggle on the Do Not Disturb feature from your control center, it automatically knows when to turn it off and when you'll be done so that you don't have to manually do it yourself. A new app that Apple introduced in iOS 12 is Measure, which lets you measure the dimensions of any object by just pointing your camera at it. So once you calibrate your device, it'll recognize the object and give you all of the different measurements. What you can also do is measure specific points by just moving your phone to where you want and then tapping on the screen. And then what you can also do is screenshot the dimensions, which will save to your photo album so you can reference it later. Also included in the Measure app is a level when you need to hang up photos or portraits. Once it's leveled correctly, it will indicate by highlighting it in green. Apple has added a few new characters to its Animoji lineup, so now we have the tiger, the koala, the dinosaur, and also the ghost, and there's also a really cool tongue detection feature, so every time you stick out your tongue, the Animoji is able to easily recognize it. There's also Memoji, which is a bit similar to Samsung's AR emoji and also Bitmoji, where you can customize your own character based on what you look like. It's really easy and really fun to use. All you have to do is tap new Memoji and then you're brought to this menu of different customization options. You can choose your skin tone based on a wide range of colors. You can also give yourself a cool hairstyle. And other options include age, you can change the shape of your chin, eye color, 
So there's a lot of fun things that you can do with it. There's even some eyewear that you can add. So if you wear glasses, you can add some cool frames. Even for sunglasses, you can change the darkness of the lens. And there's also headwear. You can add a cute little hat or you could just keep it simple. So when you're ready to use your Memoji, you just tap on the iMessage window, tap on the Animoji icon, and then find the Memoji that you want to use. I'm going to go with this one. You have to make sure that your face is lined up with the camera, and then you hit record. Hey Andy, just recording a video for Digital Trends, showing them how cool the Memoji feature is. Hope you're having fun in New York. And then you send it. So another cool thing that you can do in iMessage with Memoji and Animoji is you can take photos with it. So when you open up your camera app, you're gonna see this little icon that you tap on, and it's gonna pull up the front-facing camera. So all you have to do is tap on the Animoji icon. You can either pick your Memoji or even an Animoji. And then you can take a photo with it. You can also edit it any way you want by adding filters. You can also add text similar to the way you can do in Snapchat and Instagram. And then when you're all done, you're able to send it. A new feature that Apple has added to its settings is screen time, which is supposed to help us be on our phones a little bit less. And it also gives us a summary of exactly how much time we spend on our phones per day, as well as throughout the week. So here we can see the longest session we've had, um, the amount of times we've actually picked up our phone per hour, and the hours in which we've picked it up the most. Um, other things that you could see is how much time was spent on each app as well. You can expand it to show even more apps. Um, you can also go into a new feature called downtime. So what downtime does is it doesn't allow you to access specific apps depending on the times that you choose. So say you get home from work at 7 p.m. and you don't want to be on your phone again until the next morning at 7 a.m., you go into the always allowed section and you pick specific apps that you want to be able to access. So this can be anywhere from social media apps to news apps, and all you do is you just tap on it, and then it's added to the list, so that way, when you toggle on the downtime setting, you're still able to access it. In downtime, the only thing that you're not able to toggle off is phone calls. So you will always be able to receive phone calls and make them even when downtime is toggled on. One feature that's available in screen time is app limits. So this allows you to set specific time limits on how long you can use each app. Um, here we've added social networking and this allows you to choose anywhere between hours at a time and minutes. You can also add even more depending on the category. So there's entertainment, which is Netflix, Hulu, or any other music streaming apps. There's also health and fitness apps that you can choose from. So there's a large variety. Um, once you pick a specific category, you tap add, and then you choose how long you want to limit your app usage for. Go back to app limits. So when you do go into a specific social networking app and your time is up, what you're going to see is this window where it says time limit, you've reached your time limit on Facebook. What you can do is you can either ignore the limit and have it remind you again in about 15 minutes, or you can just completely ignore the limit for today. You enter your password, and then it allows you back on Facebook iOS 12 is currently available as a developer beta, which you can download on your device by purchasing a developer's account 
through Apple's website. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait until later this summer for the public beta. The official version of iOS 12 will be available later this fall. And for more Apple and iOS 12 coverage, be sure to check out Digital Trends.